Hello, thank you for joining me. This is Angela Anderson. Today we're going to be painting a Venice night scene. I'll be showing you step by step how to do it with acrylics. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat today for our live show. So if you have questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using a 9 by 12 inch Belgian linen canvas board from Fredericks. These are kind of my go-to canvas boards. They've got a nice hard support inside, so they're archival quality, uh, won't warp or anything like that, um, and kind of low texture. I covered it with a coat of Prussian blue, kind of a light coat. You can sort of see through that canvas underneath, but I uh, just wanted to kind of start out with a little bit of color today. And then I transferred on our design onto the canvas. Um, let's go over our brushes really quick. I've got just several different sizes. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to need, but uh, we'll just kind of, I haven't painted this yet, so we're gonna figure it out together. I've got a quarter inch and three eighths inch blender. Um, these are all Princeton brushes. Um, the Velvet Touch number one round and quarter inch and three eighths inch angle brushes. And then in there, Princeton 6100 series. I've got uh, several different sizes of round brushes, one, two, and four. And then um, in their select line, which is the light blue, I've got a 10 aught bristle fan and a 3 8 inch Deerfoot stippler. So just use what you've got that's similar. It doesn't have to be the exact sizes or brushes. Br Princeton is our brush sponsor and Fredericks is our canvas sponsor. And all those materials lists are down in the description uh, where to buy and... Um, all that good stuff. So, um, I'm also gonna possibly use my toothbrush. It gives me a little bit more control when I'm splattering. So this guy up here is needing to be splattered, obviously, which is gonna be super fun. Hope Dave's watching today. <laughs> it just needs to be splattered. He's our splatter super fan. And uh, <laughs> uh, let's um, uh, and probably maybe a palette knife. I'm not sure if I'm going to need it for some of the bl uh, mixing. So I figure I'm going to kind of mix some different blues. This is kind of mo monochromatic, even though I'm going to be using multiple colors. Um, it's still kind of all in blue. I'm calling it monochromatic. It's not really technically monochromatic, but... Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so here's our colors. Black, uh, carbon black, burnt umber, Prussian blue. That was the background color. This one is... Thalo Blue Green Shade, Ultramarine Blue, Doxazine Purple, Quinacridone Magenta, uh, Yellow Oxide, uh, titan uh, Titanium White, and then this one is Zinc White. Um, and I've put out a fluid and a hot heavy body um, choices for each one of these that I had to hit. I forgot to get out the fluid quinacridone. It's over in the corner, and I've knocked over about 12 things <laughs> trying to get to these <laughs> earlier, marking a test. Knocked over a bunch of brushes, light fixture, my my uh, thing here, my spray bottle, everything. The, the I have no idea what this is on my palette here. There's something wet there when I put down my... The Hopefully. tea must have been fermented or something. I think so. I swear <laughs> I was like stumbling around in the studio like a drunken person. All right. And then this is glass glazing medium. So glazing liquid actually. Um, so can I call nickname Titanium White, Tidy Whitey? <laughs> Done. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Get your Tidy Whitey. Get your, all right. <laughs> I think that's really funny, actually. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like your pun jokes, but that one was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's draw. <laughs> Before Mark creates any more bad puns for us. All right. So I'm just using my T-square. I'm measuring off. I don't really like cutting the canvas in half, so I made it just slightly up from the halfway mark, but it really it kind of ended up being halfway when I did it. I, guess. I don't know. Anyhow, it's fine. Um, since it's all monochromatic, it's not going to make as big of a difference, but I generally don't like to have the horizon line on the halfway mark. Um, so our little um, Venice at night here, we've got just some buildings, some different things in kind of silhouette, darkened um, shapes this tower is kind of right off to the side it's not quite halfway maybe right on the third just about here 
and then there's a big old building right here that we're seeing kind of the front face of it, just a little bit of it. And a dome right back here above it. And so there's kind of some low things that go all the way across to in front of this thing. It's kind of a lighter color than another long low building here. And then some little stuff in the water back, way, way back. A couple more bigger buildings here. And then all of this is kind of gently sloped and some very indistinct things in front. So there's kind of our basic, um, this is probably a little bit wider, basic silhouette for the Venice skyline. Oh, and there's a couple of spires here that I missed. Right there. Okay. Um, our galaxy is going to be all up in this area, kind of right in the middle, all the way across. It's going to be really fun. And then um, we're going to come down just a little bit. There's some uh, little low something in the water over here. Not really sure. Uh, pylons of some sort. And then our boats are going to start. And they're going to go almost all the way up into here. Um, I would kind of figure out where your two largest ones here in the foreground are going to be. And start there. Maybe um, map it out. So this one's going to go from right about here. It's actually a little bit farther over now that I'm looking at my photograph. It might be a little bit closer to this. Or this is actually probably farther over than I drew it. Um, no matter. It's really pretty much right at the halfway mark. So I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And it's kind of a banana shape. So if that helps you kind of visualize it. Really pointy banana. So that comes almost straight here. And then this is getting cut off right here. And you're seeing this um, photograph was obviously photoshopped because it's very blurry. So we're, um, we're not... The shapes aren't super distinct as far as the, the edges and the lines are not um, super um, detailed. This one's a little bit lower and leave just a little bit of space here. We've got to have a pole right here. And then another pole that's going from here up right in here up above so these ones are obviously foreground these ones are farther away they're a little bit smaller and shorter okay and then the inside of the boats there's kind of a curve here it looks like there's a bunch of tarps inside so I'll leave that up to you whether you want to get super detailed with that or not I'm not, I'm not probably gonna do all of the little details that I'm seeing I'm going to widen this out just a little bit. And then this one is going to be right up in this way. And it's got coming to kind of a point here. And back out like this. Again, with the little inside detail there. And then the tip of it, we're, we're not seeing the... And we're seeing this kind of a um, diamond shape right there for it. And then this one is right in here, going off. And I my photograph cuts off right in here, so I just kind of had to guess where that was because my, my canvas size is a little bit different from my photograph dimensions. So there's our boat there. And then another one here, and then this one is going to be hidden by the, this bottom of the boat is right up, this one's covering the bottom there, so we're not seeing it. And then another little one right here, again, kind of covered by this boat, right like that. And this one is going across over here. And actually a lot bigger than I drew it. 
Yeah, this one probably needed to move over, be a little bit bigger maybe. Maybe like right in here. Again, kind of guessing on that right there. There and then, oh, this is in shadow. So you're not really actually telling, you can't really tell where the bottom of the boat is hitting the water. You are seeing this kind of line of highlight across the tip of the boat. And so it's going up and around like that. And then all of this is in shadow, so we're kind of just guessing. And then you're seeing a shadow on the water coming out like this. So there's a shadow on the water all up and through here. There's your post on this one. Yeah, see this boat building needs to be moved over a little bit. Because this is up higher right here and it doesn't hit right in the middle of this building. It's kind of a little bit farther over, but I'm not gonna redraw it. I've got the traceable already, you know. I don't have it drawn out, but I'll have it for you after the show, so. Right there, so all of these kind of pretty much line up and our, this one is a little bit higher. Um, and this one is about the same height as this and then this one over here is a little bit higher still, and it kind of comes in between these two boats here. Right in here. Whoop. I can't draw that. There we go. And then... It's farther over. This one is... And I've made this one too high. This one's actually, look at the tips of them. These ones are getting smaller as they come down this way. So these two are the highest. And then the rest of them are a little bit smaller. So don't bring that one up as high as these ones here. That's a good tip about the tips. Thanks. That also helps with that perspective and making them look farther away. There, and then there's just a little bit of one poking out right there. We're seeing another post out here, a couple more posts here and here in between these two boats, close together. And this one comes up over the horizon line, so just this one right up to it. And then another post right here. Okay, so there's your kind of basic drawing. I know I went over that pretty fast, but uh, you can use a reference photo to, you know, check your work. You can also grid it out. That would be an easier way of doing it. There's lots of gridding programs on um, uh, on the internet where you can just Google grid drawing and it'll let you just pop in your photo and grid it and then you can grid your canvas and just make sure that the ratio on the canvas is the same as the drawing or, or whatever it is you're tracing or not tracing but gridding. Um, all right. Real, Let's real quick before you start, mm -hmm. somebody asked, uh, can they substitute Mars black for the carbon black since yes. they're all out? Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. no, and no minus points. No, no points minus. Okay. No. All right. That's a <laughs> suitable substitution. So we'll accept that. <laughs> Just make sure you check in with the judges. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to start with the Prussian blue. And we'll do the sky first because it's got to be splattered. And that way we can kind of work from back to front. And like we like to, like it's, it's a good practice just to do that anyways. So I need to darken up the top layer. You can see how thin that layer was because that's, Prussian black is or Prussian blue has black in it um, and if you don't have Prussian blue just use ultramarine blue some doxazine purple and black to get a similar color and I'm going to just kind of scratch in some sky texture there and I'm going to get my zinc white and 
while that paint's wet, I'm just going to kind of go up into that and leave some of this brighter blue. I kind of covered up too much of it over here because I can see some areas where there's some of this brighter blue in, um, in the sky. So leave some of that peeking through. Maybe get a little bit of the ultramarine blue with that Prussian blue. Use that up in here. Oh, that's pretty. The, the um, zinc white is transparent, so it's just going to give us a more subtle look. We're going to add white eventually, regular titanium white, tidy whitey. Um, eventually, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was your base color again? Uh, Prussian blue. Prussian blue, yeah. okay. And the tidy whitey. And tidy whitey. I, I, no, I'm not using it yet. I said I was eventually oh, going to use it. Delete that. Just Prussian blue. Yeah, just Prussian blue. Prussian. Minus three points for the announcer. <laughs> so, hello to everybody. Welcome yeah. to the show. Glad to have you joining us yes, today. Yes, it's the one of the rare shows we'll ever do on a 29th of February. I know. Happy leap year. Well, happy leap year to you. I didn't get you anything. If it's your birthday, happy whatever birthday it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're nine years old at 40 <laughs> or whatever. I don't know how that works. <laughs> Obviously, you're it's not a math not right. major, but that's okay. <laughs> what? Obviously, you're not a math major. <laughs> so, kids, <laughs> nine times four is not 40. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know how often it is. Nine, well, nine times four is 36. It's every nine years? They no, it's do? every four years. Every four years. And oh, it's okay. a year divisible by four, except for years that are a divisible by 100, except for those that are divisible by 400. Are you serious? Yes. That's the rule? Yes. I learned that this week on the radio. <laughs> wow. Okay. So that's why 2000 was a leap year, because it was divisible by 400. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. Me either. And Fascinating. I could have probably gone my whole life without knowing that. <laughs> I've been fine. <laughs> what did that take take up room what what did you have to shove out of your brain to make room for uh, that well hopefully nothing that has to do with you <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in real trouble yep okay so i got prussian or uh phthalo blue this time phthalo blue's got more that you can see the green tones in it so it's going to be more of a turquoisey blue it's really pretty i did add just a little bit of the actual titanium white because I wanted this to actually show up a little bit stronger. So we'll put that in. All of the blues are um, just going to play off each other. We're just going to have lots of different kind of blues all mixed in together. This is, I'm calling this kind of the Pantone color of the year. Um, that real blue, I think it's called, or... or True blue, or I don't know. I can't remember. I think it's maybe real blue is the name of the, or classic blue. Classic blue, I think is the name of the Pantone color of the year. And so this one is kind of our nod to that because it's this kind of just true blue, all these tones of blue. I've seen all kinds of different versions of it. So, but really, uh, ultramarine blue and phthalo blue together make a true blue. So if you're looking to mix it, that's probably what I would mix is kind of equal parts the phthalo blue green shade and the ultramarine blue. And that way you'll get kind of a true blue. And we're just kind of putting in our galaxy here. Let's get some more of the ultramarine blue on this side I'm seeing. And if you get too much of the light color, you can clean out your brush. And try not to get the these too wet because they get a little sloppy. I added a little bit of water, but probably didn't need to do that. And then get the 
original color back and then you can kind of go back over the top of the white and we're going to glaze over this um, especially down here in the bottom area because there's kind of some pinks in the sky and stuff so we're going to um, glaze the t over the top of this lightened sky area it's really fun to do this though and just one thing to um, keep an eye on is when you're doing the um, you know, scrubbing on this paint, uh, just make sure that you're letting the paint dry in between your layers because you can end up um, lifting off the color. I can see right there where it was starting to dry. And if you mess with it while it's starting to dry, it'll actually lift the paint off the canvas. So you don't want that to happen. So just kind of take your time with it. Give it a little bit of time in between the layers to for that paint to set in there. And unless you're wanting to um, wanting to uh, blend the colors, but just make sure that you're kind of catching the color. Um, don't do too much of an area before you blend it. Um, so if I'm doing the whole sky, like I start over here, added a little bit of the blend color and then add more of the black and then add or darker color and then add the lighter color and make sure that you're always working with those wet into wet colors if you're trying to blend them together. Uh, and then let it dry completely before you try to add your next layer of color over the top. So just right in here, there's kind of a light, really bright area. I'm going to use my zinc white, just using the tip of my brush here and just kind of drawing in these little circular sort of cloud-like shapes. These are really fun to paint. Are you sure those are clouds? They're not clouds. It's a galaxy. Oh, okay. I thought you said clouds. Cloud-like shapes. Oh, okay. I only listen partially, so. <laughs> but you're used to that. <laughs> Mercury clouds. Yes, I'm used to that. spent an hour, half hour on the phone with Spencer yesterday trying to pick out shoes for work from distance, sending me photos and it's like, this is our 18 year old. I love him to death, but he reminds me of you in that way a little bit sometimes. It's like, it's like they told me, they showed me what they look like and they, you know, told me what to buy and goes to look and he's looking at and then like a half an hour into the conversation, oh, I found him. I'm like, oh. So he tried on like three pairs and all the while I'm driving in my car so I can't like, you know. <laughs> it's just, yeah, sorry. I don't know why that made me think of it. <laughs> it's just the. Because it, he's my it's, kid. It's your lack of hunter-gathering skills. You've passed on to the next generation. No, it's my <laughs> abundance of impatience. <laughs> is that what it is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they should only have what I want. <laughs> there shouldn't be other choices. And that makes it so much easier. Of course. Okay. That's pretty close, I think, to what we're looking for. Um, let's start splattering. We can always add more later when we, after we splatter, we can scrub in some more if we need to, but try to get it mainly done, you know. I'm going to start with the zinc white, add it a little bit of water. Um, the fluid, if you have the fluid zinc white, it's already kind of thinned out, so you really won't have to add a whole lot of water to it, but if you don't have the fluid, you definitely need to add water at this point and I'm going to put it on a glove because I'm mm -hmm. being smart today. <coughs> Oops, where are my gloves? There they are, down there. Let's knock over about 12 more things. I'm trying to get it. So while she puts on her there glove, oh, she's already done. Yeah. All right. So 
I'm holding my uh, toothbrush. Get a flat edge toothbrush if you can, old school kind, and really stiff bristles. And those are the kind that work the best for this. Hold it in your fist like this with your thumb, just able to kind of reach over the top of it and then point it straight down at your canvas, wherever the paint's going to fly off in this direction. So don't point it at, you know, somebody, something you care about. Um, somebody or something that you care about. Make sure. And the closer you get to the canvas, obviously the tighter the pattern will be. If you want a looser pattern, lift it up a little bit farther away. That's actually done pretty good. Not bad. Let's get a little bit of the titanium white now. So we'll have a different tone. So this will be kind of our farther away um, stars. Be a little bit lighter in the sky. You know how that works. Um, and then these will be the ones that are a bit more vivid and closer, maybe. I really like the toothbrush just for this kind of thing because it gives it a lot more control. I can get real close to the canvas here. With the fan brush, um, it's a little bit more scattered pattern. A little bit less predictable where you where those splatters are gonna fall. I'm gonna get right up here and do some really tight stars all in this really white area right in the middle. So a little bit less along the outside edges and more right in here where we want it to be the most vivid. Let's get some of the sink white again. I'm going to do some more buttering way out here. This sink white. There are a lot of like little teeny tiny stars in the sky. If you look at the photograph, it's just like covered with stars. So in this area in here, especially, is very sparkly. Okay, so what was the order of white? Zinc Colors. white, zinc white, and then titanium white, and I'm doing zinc white again to do these little baby splatters everywhere. The bigger, thicker ones were done in titanium white, mostly just right in this area, and then the zinc white everywhere else. Oops, I got a little spot there. So if you get a little spot where you don't like what it looks like, you can take a wet towel and dab it off you'll probably take off all the stars around it. So just keep that in mind. I kind of didn't catch that one in time. So what do you do now? Just painting over it again? Yeah, I'm okay. just touching it up with a little bit of blue paint right there. All right, so I need to let that dry completely. So we'll work on the water and then we'll go back up to that. Um, also, like right in here, I don't want any of the splatters down in the water. Um, it's fine if they get down there because we're going to be covering up all of this. But if you have a thick one, you know, you don't want a big bubbled, raised bubble on the bottom there. So just going to take off any of it. So we're pretty much done with the sky. We'll just glaze it at this point um, with a little bit of pink and maybe a tiny bit of yellow. And uh, But everything else is pretty much done. So that wasn't too bad. I'm going to go ahead and let's start on the um, buildings back here. So I'm going to get the number one round in the 61 under series. And my black and my Prussian blue. I want this to be really, really dark. So I'm mixing these two together, but it's mostly black. And I'm just gonna go right up in here. Start with the little tower. Fill that in. And there's some stuff around the sides of it, so you can get fancy with it if you want to. I'm just going to kind of keep it simple, I think. I probably could have gone a little bit lighter on the horizon line because I'm seeing that 
um, this is not as distinct, you know, so it could have gone maybe just a shade lighter on the blue sky back here to make these buildings pop out of just a little bit more, but they're okay. It's just, they're not going to be maybe quite as distinct as the photograph. And, um, if you've transferred on your design, you're going to want to cover over the top of your transfer lines and another, um, kind of tip for doing the transferring um draw you know draw it on paper and then trace it and transfer it onto the the canvas with your um graphite or I like using the Sorrel um, paper I started using it about a year ago and I really like it because it's waterproof or it's water um soluble thank you not waterproof, water soluble, and so you can uh, erase it and stuff, so it makes it nice. All right, so adding a little bit of light color, white, and I grabbed a little bit more of that phthalo blue there. I'm going to make kind of a light gray blue here and use it to highlight the top of the roof. It's not light enough. And the top of the dome just a little bit. Yeah. And then this part of the... So when you're transferring on your design, I started to say this and then stopped. Um, make sure that you uh, go just inside your design lines. So make everything just a little bit smaller then you want it to end up because you want to cover over these lines. And so if you don't, um, if you do them too large, if you do them exactly on your drawing, um, your line, you're, you're going to end up painting over the top of your drawn lines and everything will be just a little bit wide. So just, uh, scale it down just a little bit too. If you're transferring on your designs. Get some of this black Prussian blue. Let's get a little bit of the purple. Put some of that in there. There's the a little bit of purple in the Prussian blue, so it's a good. I think, well, no. I'll do it later. Let's go ahead and mix up some lighter. Blue gray, I'm gonna use the ultramarine blue and white. Yeah, that's good. And I still have that Prussian blue black in my brush, so it's toning it down a little bit. There we go. Somebody's asked, can they paint the buildings like a dark navy color? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what this color is, okay. pretty much. And then on that Sorel paper, do you have that in your Amazon store? It is, yes. Oh, nice, links down below. Yes. Go get you some. It's great. Is I. It comes in five five colors. Blue, white, yellow, red, black, white and black. It's basic and then blue, yellow, and red. Extra colors. Okay, just kind of doing some little, I'm not going to get super detailed back here. This is not our focal point. So, I'm going to keep all of this pretty. But yeah, you could do this all solid too. You don't have to do this, what I'm doing, you know, and giving it depth um, in the buildings. You could just leave them all kind of solid silhouette and that'd be totally fine just gives a little bit more character but it does not have to be and especially if you're a beginner you can all for making it easy whoops that was too big I'm trying to make a door there but that was big Okay, I'm going to can come back with my smaller brush maybe and add some little lines and things, but that's good enough for now. 
And then there's a little bit of highlighted buildings over here. Slightly Shh, whispering. I've been having real trouble with my paints drying out fast this time of year. It's just super dry in the studio. That's why I put out the fluid acrylics because I figured it'd give me a little bit longer drying time to work with. And this is not showing up, so I'm going to just have to add black to it. And there's a dark line against the water edge, so make sure you have all this darkened right up against, get that black and just darken it up all the way against this water line. And it's actually not fully um, horizontal. It's got some parts, I think, that are coming in front. So there, it dips down just a little bit in some areas, which normally on water you'd want it to be solid because this is kind of a close, close to us and we're, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just noticing like some certain areas like this, you're, you're seeing some stuff in front. So they're coming just a little bit low on the water. Okay, I think that's good enough. Kind of gives us a little sense of something happening in that building there. And then there's these little, here's our obligatory oh, neighborhood truck. Oh, you talked right over his, his moment. Sorry. <sighs> Mark's, just, I'm trying to talk Mark out of buying a truck, but he's, I think he's set on it. He's got his <laughs> heart set on getting a truck, so. I'm trying to be supportive. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm not a guy, so I don't get the need. Like need just, is relative. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I get it, though. You drive a Prius to work, you got to have something fun to drive on the weekends, right? Well, you know, like this morning I was hauling cow manure in the back of the Prius, so, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Check. Okay, so there we go. There's our background here. These are obviously too bright, so I'm going to uh, go back in here and just... Kind of tone these down and add some dark over the top here. This one kind of got disappeared a little bit, so I'm gonna put that back in. Just kind of add some little dabs of lighter stuff going on in there. Kind of helps tell the story. There's things back here that are catching the light. Fun. It seems like the people in chat are on my side. That you need a truck? <laughs> okay. Fine. Take names. No. <laughs> <laughs> take names. <laughs> okay. Getting the, this is all, should be dry by now. So I'm going to get the Quinacridone magenta and my glazing medium. Quinacridone is already nice and transparent, so it's perfect for glazing. It gets a little bit of purple just to make it a little bit less in your face magenta. Um, and keep it super transparent. You can see how you can see through there. That's how thin you want it. And we're going to just go right up along the bottom here. Glaze our night sky right down in here. Add a little bit of pink glow. And I'm not 
worried about those buildings are dark enough that this is not going to really affect them. So go right up over top, up against them, it's fine. Do a second coat, you can see the second coat's really going to make it a little bit more obvious. Really pretty. Okay, you can use purple, you can use whatever colors you want. Um, I'm also seeing just a tiny bit of yellow. Now yellow oxide that I'm using here is not transparent. So it will, it'll be a little bit more opaque. It'll be, it'll cover over the top of the other colors more. So you just have to keep that in mind. Use a lot less of it. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of it right down here. See if I can get it to cover. Yeah, that's good. Very subtle. But I'm seeing just a little bit of like an orangey glow in some places. This is totally optional. But I wouldn't try this without um, having glazing medium. Just because it... Uh, well, the... Acrylics need um, binder to make them stick to the canvas, and the binder is the clear part of the paint, pigment being the op, you know other part. And if you add too much water, about 30% uh, or more than 30% water to your paint, which you kind of would have to to get it this transparent, um, then it it basically underbinds it. It just kind of erases all that binder, and it's um, you're just putting pure pigment and water onto your canvas just about and it's not going to actually stick it's not like the glue is diluted it's basically you're diluting the glue okay and then one last layer of lights over the top now that we've got that purple glow on there do one more layer of splatters and try not to get it on my buildings which is going to be tough but we'll see how we do here let me get the and what I can do is kind of lay this over my buildings down low and then the only ones that I have to worry about are right here. I'm just gonna put my fingers there. Come on. There we go. My paint is kind of drying in there, so. See, the fluid acrylics already have more of the fluid. It's They've got their glue, quote unquote, mm -hmm. is, is a thinner, you know, more fluid um, base. And so they can be thinned more. They're already thinned, so they're easier to do stuff like this with. Okay, there we go. And if I get any... Lots like there. Just gonna wipe that off and we're good to go. Alright, so there's our sky. Not too hard, really. It's really fun actually. I love doing these kind of night sky paintings. They're really easy and they look really good. Right. Yeah, you got a couple other ones. Yeah, we've got a whole playlist of night sky, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did the one with the guitar and the, the galaxy, couple. Night and... sky galaxy paintings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all kinds of different ones. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm thinking I'm going to move to a little bit bigger brush, not too big. This is the, uh, let's see, what is it? Two round. Clean your brushes out and just, I have them laid off to the side on a paper towel like this, off to the side, and then every now and then I'm wetting them down. Um, so that uh, they don't dry out. You don't want them to dry out with the, with the paint in there. You're not gonna be able to get them fully clean just in water, you need to use soap. So after the show, I always spend about a half an hour cleaning my brushes uh, off screen. <laughs> and Mark sometimes helps me. Oh yeah. He's being nice. I try. It's, I appreciate it. It's a, 
kind of a pain, but it uh, your brushes will last years and years if you treat them right. And like you're spending your, enough money on them, you don't want to, you know. Kind of just like your spouse. <laughs> They'll last years and years if you treat them right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're spending enough money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, go, it goes both ways. <laughs> it's true. That's <laughs> <coughs> true. Especially when they want to get a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll remember. <laughs> you did let me renovate the entire house last year, so. True debt. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically like moving, only having to live in the mess we while lived, you were moving. <laughs> we lived in three different houses, but in the same house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One half, then the other half, and then the holes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was not fun, but we did it. And now we have a nice house, so it was worth it. Okay, so I added the phthalo blue over here with white, and then this one is the, um, I'm sorry, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, more more white with the phthalo blue here. So I've got kind of three different colors we'll be using in the water here, and I'm not sure. This may be too light. We'll see. Oh, that looks about right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of lightly go over back and forth and leave some of that background color showing. And I'm going to pretty much go over these. Um, right up to those pylons there. Um, if you're worried about your drawing, well, what we could do is put in our posts first. So I could take my black and like put my post in and then we'll have it there and we can paint over it. I don't know why that's turning out to be so light. It's because I have that light blue in my brush. Getting the black. These are going to be one of the darkest things on the canvas so I want to put them in black. There is a little bit of highlight on one side, so I'm not worried about the highlight color. Okay, we got a question here. Yeah. They said that if they do the night sky on a black canvas, if they add a, like mm -hmm. a blue-purple glaze, would it help give depth to it? Um, so they're starting with the black canvas? Yes. Um, well, I mean, if you're if you're adding the lighter areas like we did to it, then black is fine to start with. But yes, then you could add blue glaze over the over the white areas, and um, yeah, so you could start with black, do white everywhere, and no color, just black and white to get your values, and then glaze your blue around the edges like we did the pink, and it'll look it'll work the same. In fact, I think I did a video that way. Uh, I think the Star Trek video, maybe I might have like the Star Trek symbol. I think I might have done the galaxy that way. I'm not sure. So, um, like I said, there's a ton of different ways of doing it, but, um, yeah. So this is, I think one of the more efficient, faster ways of doing it, less steps. Um, and it still looks good. Like you can, you know, we got a lot of different blues up in here and starting with that light kind of medium blue kind of gives us a good base and then we can darken it and lighten it both and we don't have that far to go to get our values if that makes sense you know if you kind of start with the medium value then you can go lighter and darker um, around it and um, as opposed to starting with a really really dark and then you have to go like two shades lighter you know and try to get your middle value in there um, this way we only had to go you know a couple of shades in either direction we already are starting out in the middle. I don't know. You get it. Hopefully you get it. Okay. Again, it's it's the hands that bring it all together. <laughs> Shut up. If I was not talking with my hands, then exactly. you wouldn't have seen it. You right. Know? Okay. Especially, I like it when you did the, the thing with the butterfly and the, the flowers and you were showing how they point towards you. <laughs> this way. Like this. <laughs> 
Well, that's true. The flower yeah. petals go like that, yeah. and then as they come towards you, they look like that's that. Right. Yep. And then you're only seeing this little part. And I mean, all joking aside, I mean, I, I understand better in pictures and in images. So, you know, you're people, seeing you, pe- people it's rubbing off ways. on you. Well, <laughs> you should see the whiteboard in my office right now. <laughs> You know, I'll be having a meeting with people, and mm-hmm. I get up, and they're like, "Oh, great!" Yeah. <laughs> Mark's going to draw his kindergarten sketches again. <laughs> See, spot run. Mm-hmm. What do you mean your kindergarten sketches? So, what do you draw on there? <laughs> now I'm curious. <laughs> like, Circles and lines and blocks and all for, different colors for the our airplane parts. Mark builds airplanes. Well, logic stuff, trying to say, okay, we have this, and this has to talk to that and do this. and hmm Yep. I'm not understanding, but that's okay. But that's okay. Yeah, you don't have to. I'll draw you a picture later. Okay, thanks. <laughs> or hand gestures, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So as Angela alluded to earlier, She'll have the traceable up later on today or tomorrow for this, and it's available on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yes. Uh, today is the last day of the month. and So don't sign up today. Do not sign up today, please. Because you'll get charged twice. You'll get charged today, and you'll get charged tomorrow. So right. sign up on Monday or Saturday, Sunday. Only yeah. if you're watching this on February 29th, 2020. Any other time, go ahead and sign up. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a fair warning, yeah. you know, because they do it by calendar month. And so it's the first through whatever the it last charges you immediately is. on the day that, yeah, yeah, on the day that you sign up. And then it'll charge you again on the first of every month after that. So no matter when you signed up, you'll always get charged again on the first. So just, I hate it when I see people sign up on the last day of the month because I'm like, oh, If that happened to you, just contact me and I can, I'll help you with it. Okay, so putting in the things. I'm just trying to see if I'm getting these values. I need to leave um, them, I want them a little bit darker back here. I just want them like a couple shades lighter than the back there. I think that this is good. This is this section might be a little bit too light. So I'm, I mixed up a little bit more of the Prussian blue over here while I was talking. The Prussian blue... Prussian blue plus white. This is almost, this is straight Prussian blue right in this little corner here. And then this is a little bit whiter, whiter, whiter. And then this is the, the, the hey, cashmere. What are you doing? Kitty cat. She has a lot to say this morning. Mm-hmm. She wanted into the studio. We left her out. Oh, well, now she's talking to dad. Telling him all about her day. She's not supposed to be in our bedroom. She doesn't, but I leave the, sometimes when I go out, I had to, I went out, uh, out of town this week. And so I left my bedroom door open because the vacuum robot vacuum comes through. And so I wanted them to do it. So I come home and she's laying on our bed. She's like, well, if you're going to leave me here, I'm going to get on your bed. Mm-hmm. Like she knows she was just looking at me so smug too. She was like, what you gonna do about it? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Spank me? <laughs> That's a famous line from when I was a child. I actually said that to my mom. I was a horrible and, child. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I did get spanked <laughs> a lot. <laughs> So on that note, we'll explain the levels for traceables. Going a little bit lighter here in this. So on the Patreon.com, there's a $2 level, and that gets you access to the traceables, and that's all traceables back to February 2017. And then there's the $5 level, which is traceables plus access to a bonus video and the high-res photos and all that good stuff. High-resolution photos and, and the, plus the traceable. Traceable, yep. Mm-hmm. And then $10 is all of that, plus access to a exclusive Facebook group where uh, they do another painting that goes over the whole month and then sometimes bleeds into the next month. Yeah, this, this one is taking two months because we 
it's like literally this was almost two hours mm-hmm. <laughs> section. Mm-hmm. It, it's taken a while because there's so much detail but you can see you know we're really focusing on blending in these fabrics and things and we got to about right here and kind of so it's taken about three to four layers in each little section you can see just to get this kind of level of soft blending and things so it's really good advanced lesson and we do that on Thursdays um, with them and, and I paint for a couple hours on Thursdays and an hour, hour and a half, depending on, you know, yep, and how I feel that day. But Angela also you know, will try to help you with any things that you're working on in your paintings. Yes, and yes we do. You get to Detailed vote on, critiques and things. Yeah, you get to vote on next month's, uh, yep. well, it's already set, so you'll get to vote on the next month's April's. lineup. Yep of uh, videos that should be yeah doing. and that's just out so if you want to see what we're painting in march um and actually have one one in april already scheduled out too um it's on the if you click on my name or my photograph that's uh, right under this video it'll take you to um my home my channel homepage, and you can check that out so and give it a thumbs up so I know which ones you like mm-hmm. ahead of time. You can thumbs up a video ahead of time or thumbs down. I get a lot of thumbs downs ahead of time. <laughs> I had somebody that was like dedicated to thumbs downing all my videos for a while there. It was like every single video, like it would be, they must have had notifications or something set because every single time I would post anything new, I would immediately get two thumbs downs. So I feel like they had two accounts, and they would just use both to them. I don't know. I'm a little paranoid that way, maybe. And then just after? It was just weird because it was like every single time yeah, it was yeah. two thumbs down. And after they did that, they did finger guns to themselves in the mirror? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I strikes again. Yeah. We hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I know I get the weirdest comments sometimes. I'm like, people, these are video, these are free videos. Like, I'm sorry if it offends you, but you know, they're like, you're horrible. You're worse than Bob. You're not even like Bob Ross or something. And I'm like, I didn't say I'm like Bob Ross. Like, why would you even go there? Like, of course I'm not Bob Ross. She doesn't even have curly hair. And I don't even paint in oil paint. I mean, it's like the stupidest arguments. I don't know. So I always, I don't engage the trolls. Yeah. Mark likes to argue back. But well, but I want to offer them back a full refund for the free video. <laughs> so. <laughs> Satisfaction guaranteed. Exactly, or your money back. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. I don't take it personally. I used to get really offended by it, but now I just block them. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it's my chart, my my channel. I get to say who gets to insult me. <laughs> <laughs> Only the privileged. Only view. the privileged get to insult me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take constructive criticism if it's done nicely. I just if you're being mean about it, I'm I'm not gonna listen to that. Plenty of people who give me. And that's a good life lesson for anything. Oh, true. No matter what it is. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm just going to go all the way across these posts, and that way I'm going to get a good highlight all the way across. And they're getting a little bit lighter as they come closer to our boats. So just a little bit darker back in here and then as I get closer up in here and I'm really just kind of using um as I get closer here I'm switching to the thalo blue for the highlights and that way they're going to be a little bit brighter a little bit more kind of green that black tone in the Prussian blue um you know dulls down the color so these will be a little bit more vivid in the foreground where they're using that thalo blue instead of the Prussian blue and just leaving a little bit of that background color showing if I can that way it kind of gives that illusion of water see how that works 
go right up over the top of your boat too because you don't want to have to paint around that. You don't want like a little halo of blue around your boats. So go right up over them just a little bit. And then of course, oh, Cashmere's got something to say over there. She wants you to share her chair with you, your chair with her. I mean, her chair with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly how she sees it. You said it right the first time. <laughs> it's our studio cat, Cashmere. I mean, I had a. She's our one and only pet that's left. We've. <laughs> I had to race her to the chair and sit down. <laughs> She's become very clingy in this last year. She never used to get in the studio at all. I wouldn't let her, but the dog was in here, so she didn't want to hang out with him, you know. But now that she's by herself, she's like, this is mine. She wants... In which brush are you using right now? This is the number two round. Number two round. Mm -hmm. And keeping the... Keeping all these waves horizontal will keep them looking like water. You know, they're kind of going to flatten out. Um, this is not high seas, so this is all kind of calm water. It's just sort of got a little bit of ripples in it, and so we're just going to keep seeing this back and forth. You can kind of curve it just a little bit, maybe like this, you know, just slight curves um, in this foreground, but... As they go farther away, they're going to look just like, almost just like straight lines. So, just keep on doing that. And if you get too much of the light color on there, you can always go back in with the dark and add more in. So don't worry about that if you, you know get too happy with your highlight colors. They're going to get smaller and closer together as you go farther up, so the um, little waves are going to be teeny tiny. You can see how small these little lines are here. And then as we go farther down, they're going to get farther and wider and bigger. Um, so... And so back in here, I'm going to get that darker Prussian blue that's mixed up with that white and just use the very, very tip of the brush to do teeny tiny little lines back and forth back here. And I'm leaving a little bit of space to put my little black. I'm just kind of trying to leave a little gap there so I know where to put my black pylons or whatever that thing is in the water, the little black buoys. Thank you, that's the word. Thank you. I can't, no. Pylons? Okay. I don't know. I, it's my, my words don't work when I'm painting. You, you know your nautical terms. <laughs> Either that or we're both wrong, so. <laughs> Which is more likely than not. Yeah. We'll convince each other that we're right. Mark and I did a crossword puzzle last night. It was pretty funny. We yeah. only cheated twice. <laughs> <laughs> I suggested we post a, post a picture on the Facebook group for people to help us. <laughs> we were able to cheat with just Google. So Google's awesome. What did you do without Google? Had to wait for the next day's paper, I guess. Or just not do crosswords. <laughs> Which is what I did for years. <laughs> Mark learned a new word. I did. Rhyme. R-I-M-E. Well, yeah, I forgot it already. You forgot it already? Yeah. <laughs> you already blocked it out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the trauma. Oh, the trauma. So, 
So in the middle, you said okay. you, you, you mixed a variation of different blues earlier. You, you yeah. describe each one of those colors. Could you do, talk about them again, please? Phthalo blue and white, and then a little bit more of the blue than white. So this lighter version, darker version. And then over here is the Prussian blue with white, all in that area. So those are the colors. I'm using the Prussian blue back here, and then as I come down closer, using that phthalo blue. And then this middle area is going to kind of mimic this area that's brighter right here. So this middle area is going to be brighter across right in here. Um, it's all Photoshop, so I'm sure that, I don't know, maybe the original photo was not. But I, I feel like this part of the sky was probably not quite that bright. I don't know. I could be wrong. Well, but they can do some interesting thing with filters now and it's true. Can do that. Yeah, that's true. It could be unfiltered. Yeah, it's definitely computer aided for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I've I've watched some YouTubers that do picture enhancements and uh -huh. yeah, through the different programs they can do stuff like that. Mm, okay, cool. Okay, so as we get down here, they're going to go darker again as we come down to the bottom. So it's like dark, light, dark. <laughs> so I'm going to get that Prussian blue. And really all of this is going to be really dark back in here. In fact, I'm going to get the black and do... Well, of course I got too much of this light color on my brush. Let's just go ahead and finish all the way up to here and then we can... We'll glaze over the dark areas. I'm going to use a little bit of the ultramarine blue down here too. Just change up the tone a little bit. Make it a little bit more purpley. What are you laughing at? She's resigned herself to her bed. She doesn't look very happy. She's, is she glaring at you? She's, well, she's just like ignoring me. So mean. I thought we were going to have a moment. We can mm -hmm. snuggle and watch mommy paint, but. No can do. <laughs> She's a funny cat. She holds a grudge like nobody's business, man. She is, when we go on trips and stuff, she doesn't like to be left alone in the house. And so she's like, when you go on trips and stuff, it'll sometimes take her a full day before she'll acknowledge anybody. She won't. She doesn't like come and join, greet you at the door like, oh, I'm so glad you're home. Oh, no. It's like, Kashmir, where are you? And she hides. And she'll finally come out and she'll just ignore you <laughs> the whole day. I had to eat stale food for two days. So, I never forgive you for that. Okay, continuing. So, I want to bring that brightness down here a little bit from this one. So, just go back and forth right here. And I need to put that post in because I don't even know where it started. <laughs> I'm going to get that black. Okay, put that post in. It goes right up there. And I'm not sure where it comes down into the water from the... This photograph is kind of hard to tell. I think it goes all the way down to here, which I would guess these are all kind of lined up, so... Like that. And then you can get this Prussian blue dark with the black and just use it in the water right here to create our shadow. Do the same thing here. Make sure you have your light color down before you try to do this. So there you go. And let's keep on going over here. Got a little bit of black in there. To get some of that ultramarine blue. Clean out my brush. 
Somehow I got brown. I must have grabbed a little bit brown. We're going to shadow all this, so it's not going to end up being this exact um, outline here I'm doing. color coming in alongside of it with the darker color and then we're gonna shadow this whole area in here but what we're trying to do is get a little bit of texture a little bit of movement along the sides of this shadow so when we do do the shadow it's not just like a dark shape in the water, but it's gonna kind of blend into what we've got here a little bit. So there's just like a little bit of a dark border around where these lighter sh highlights are. Okay, then we can grab that dark black, a little bit of the Prussian blue. I'm going to use it in the water here. Gonna look better once we get our boats kind of painted in, but this will give you an idea. Just keep these edges kind of fuzzy right through here. And I can use a little bit of the glazing medium too to go a little bit more subtle with it. my shadow on the water here so I'm just going to get a little bit of that glazing medium with my shadow color and just going to go over that area right there right there this one is back in here so let's go ahead and put in our posts and that'll help us to get our bearings Oops, looked up. Let's try that again. There we go. 
show. This one is right in here. And it's got a highlight on this side of it. Not that bright, but... Let's go ahead and highlight this one a little bit so it shows up against the... One good trick is, like, if you've got something like this where you're like, it's too dark behind it, you can't see where it is, and you can just highlight a little bit of it and it'll show up now. And then we'll probably want to do it with this one too, or maybe let's just darken it and see if that helps. Because it's kind of light. There we go. Now we can go back over that water area. I kind of, I, I do like um, these ones where I've kind of done the, um, and and one thing I did, um, didn't mention is that the, because the, it's kind of a fisheye lens, they, uh, these are not fully horizontal. As they go off to the side, they start to arch out a little bit. Um, so, these poles are not straight horizontal all the way down. But I do like the ones where I've done the post ahead of time. It's a little bit easier to see where they go. I can tell enough. Good. Then there's another post right here. And another one right to this side of this that goes up to about right here. all the way down to the boat right here. I stopped it there. I don't know why, but it goes all the way down to the boat. And then there's that large one. Okay, I got it. Got that already. Let's do this one. This one ends way out here in the water. Again, get some of that halo blue and a little bit in the water right there. These posts are kind of, I mean, you know, it's, we could wait to the very end to do them. I don't know, you know, it's kind of either way. We're going to have to paint around them either way we do it, so it doesn't really matter. You could save them to the very end if you wanted to. Do them all at the same time at the very end after you put your boats in, but I feel like, especially like right in here where we're going to be overlapping the boats on them, you know, but then we're going to have to paint around them. So we'll probably end up having to touch up some places where we, if we cover them, you know, fine, either way. Um, I'm going to go up a little bit higher, but I'm going to highlight some of these posts. Uh, Actually, I think this one's a little bit lower. And then there's another post right here in the water down farther back. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Bring this one up just a little bit more. And give it a little bit of a highlight on this side because the our light source is there, so Something like this, the light's leaking around both sides of it, just about. This one might be on this side of it a little bit. I'm seeing the, the light kind of shining on this side. There might be something also that we're not seeing that's casting light here from somewhere off camera. Let's get a little bit of the zinc white now. Maybe a little bit of titanium white and some of this blue, the phthalo blue, that lightest shade. I'm just going to add a little bit of that really bright Just in a couple places. I better not be my chair when I come back. <laughs> Mark's leaving the room. See how long it takes for Kashmir to get into his chair. here. This is the blender here. I'm going to use it to do the shadows in the water down here. Use a little bit of the Prussian blue and black. You can use a little bit of purple too if you want. This whole back area here is dark. off, get a little bit more of the blue, maybe let's use the ultramarine blue, I still had that black in my brush, and so right in here where it's transitioning to the lighter color, I'm just going to trans transfer to the little bit lighter blue, it's still dark, but it's not that fully black color, use it along the sides. I'm going to go ahead and use it right here in the water. I've already done. So you can see right here where it's really kind of obvious. That's what I'm trying to work on here. I'm just kind of trying to transition from the... She didn't get in your seat. I'm surprised. No, no. I can hear her purring though. She's purring. She's happy you're back. 
Weird cat. She's very content. Yeah, she's happy. I'm never gonna get my truck if you don't hurry up. <laughs> what time do they close? Five. What time is it? Three thirty. Oh, yeah. They'll stay late to make a sale. Are the banks even open today? Their computers are down, but they they offered it. Bring it to the house. Are you serious? <laughs> I swear. Yes. <laughs> and they'll do the paperwork on Monday? Yeah, and they said they'll do it next week. <sighs> Hilarious. Well, that's what you get when you buy three cars from somebody in, yeah, they said, four, you, in three years. He said, would you like to have your truck delivered, sir? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I think you're just buying it because you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so manly looking. I know it is. It's... I don't think you need a truck. You don't think I need a truck? Mm -mm. I... What? Is she okay? No. What's the matter? Oh, she's gonna get sick. <laughs> Hairball. That was weird. She doesn't usually meow when she does it. Some of the highlight color. I'm just going to put it back in in a few places. It's a little bit smaller brush, so I have a little bit more control. This is the quarter inch blender. shadows in there looks good on the water now let's go ahead and use the quarter inch angle brush here and I'm gonna put out some more Prussian blue because it will run out I found it there it is Just go ahead and clean off my palette because I don't need any of this anymore really and it's all dried out anyways give me a place to work Okay. Yeah. Just had a hairball. That was weird. She didn't feel. She was letting us know she didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm getting 
stop talking this video today. <laughs> Interruption for hairballs. It's turning out all right. Yeah. So far, so good. So now the key with this part is going to be to not overdo it because I like to go in for the detail and I'm going to try to keep this as kind of light and loose as possible. So we'll see how we do. Um, and again, we've got the medium value already there. So we just have to add the darker and the lighter and we can leave that kind of medium color where, um, where we see it in our photo. So I think it'll be all right. I'm going to get the Prussian blue. Let's go ahead and add a little water to it and get some more titanium white out. <laughs> I think that's one of my favorites <laughs> that you've come up with this year. Tidy way. <laughs> uh, I can see it on t-shirts. <laughs> Use tidy whitey to make to paint this <laughs> or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty funny. You got your tidy whitey? <laughs> that Prussian blue as a base and then adding some of the thalo blue here. I'm just going to kind of go in here and highlight on the top of the boat. Almost dry brushing kind of. And really it's kind of more be too light. And get some ultramarine blue and add that. I think let's do the dark parts first and then we'll do the highlights over the top. It'll be easier to see where we need to add them, I think our values will be more obvious. So we'll start out with the Prussian blue and add a little bit of black. We'll get in here with the darkest areas. Do those first. Boat openings. And I, there's tarps on here, so I don't really know what they look like without the tarps. But um, if you don't want to I guess these are seats, so they're probably kind of rounded right here and here. I can see in the photograph there was kind of some areas there, so we can maybe do like that. And then use this dark color up here on the bow to really define that. At the bow or the stern, I don't know. I can't remember. Bow is the tip, right? Uh, let's see. There's a bow and there's a stern. Port and starboard. Port is to the left. Starboard is the right. Okay. There's a Leo deck and a poop deck. <laughs> is there a barf deck? A cashmere? <laughs> If there isn't, there ought to be one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's about all the boat stuff I know. Well, I'm glad I had an excuse not to have to clean up the cat. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> and what excuse was it for the litter box? <laughs> I did it the last time before that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was my excuse. Just kind of using a medium value here to kind of let's. I, I can see that this 
light color comes all the way down and around this side of the boat a little bit, so bring that lighter color down. And I'm just going to barely touch it in a couple places just to kind of indicate stuff going on. Try to blend out this edge so it's not so harsh. I think that's pretty good. Give this a little light right there, a little highlight. Define it a little bit. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty and do all the ropes and all that stuff. Although I might do a little bit of a rope, but you know what I mean. Like I'm not going to try to define every shape in here. It's just going to be a lot too much. Mark wants to go buy a truck, so we can blame him. No, the salesman wants me to go buy a truck. <laughs> well, because it's the last day of the month. Mm -hmm. They're like, please buy a truck. <laughs> and we'll bring it to your house. <laughs> it's hilarious. So, like, literally, what? how would we even, we wouldn't be signing papers. Like, they would just. We would sign something, I guess. And online? I don't or? know. Okay. I don't know. All right, I'm going to need to move on. Next boat. I'm just going to use this brush, since, or color, since it's on my brush. Do the highlight on this one. Do the highlight on along the edge right here. And if we did this right, when we clean this up, we won't have a bunch of gaps. That's, you know, you want, like I said before, you don't want to have to paint back in your C because you left too much of it showing. I think we're good. So we just want to darken up the tips of the boat here. Really good. We've already got this kind of seat in here. We're mapped out. We've got our medium value in there so we don't have to do a whole lot on this one. Let's get some of the lighter. I feel like that is just a little too dull. Get some of the brighter blue. There we go. We got a question here. Person wants to know how do you get through a tutorial when you're not particularly in the mood to paint? Mm. <laughs> That's happened before, for sure, you know, after doing this for so many years. But, you know, it's like even if I'm not in the mood for it when I sit down, usually I'll get there once I get to painting. And I've noticed that, that, um, um, oh, there's a famous quote by one of the artists. I think it's Picasso. It's like, inspiration has to find you working or something like that or creativity needs to find you working or I, I can't remember but anyhow basically the point was that it won't you know just sitting and waiting for yourself to feel the urge to paint is not necessarily um, and I used to do that like there'd be days where I'm just like I don't feel like painting today and I wouldn't paint you know and so it might like the longer that you do that and you allow yourself to not you know to not get back into it, the you know, it can take turn into weeks of not painting. So um, it's better just to sit down and do something, even if you don't feel like it, than to not do it at all, you know. And so for me, like I said, you know, once I sit down and now, you know, I, I usually will get into it pretty quickly once I get start the process. It's just making myself do it sometimes. It's not, you know. And there's times when I get into the middle of a painting and I'm like, oh, I wish I could quit right now. 
you know, especially sometimes on those bonus video days where, you know, it's a six hour painting and I'm like, uh, really? So it's nice that we do it on Crowdcast now because I can take a break in between and we have like 15 minute breaks um, worked into the schedule on those days. So I can stop and get a snack, and, you know, which is nice. So how long have we been an hour? Oh, oh, not too, not too long. I told Mark about an hour and a half. So we will be about two hours. I'm guessing on this one, a little bit over. Still not too bad. I'm glad. Well, this is better than that Tuesday night one. <sighs> I should have done this. It was between this one and the feather pen. I was trying to figure out which one I could work on a Tuesday night and which one I could do faster. And I thought this one might take longer. So I did this one on Saturday. And I should have done the other one on Saturday. This one on Tuesday. You never know. Mark's a good sport, but I could tell he was tired. You're just lucky they didn't find all the gold this Tuesday night. Um, yeah. Oak Island. Yeah. That's why I need a truck, because I'm going to go help them. <laughs> I should sponsor our channel because we talk about them so much. <laughs> <laughs> Contact Discovery Channel and be like, hey... So I want to go real dark down here, get that Prussian blue black down in here, this whole area. I'm just putting in kind of dark because you can't really tell what it is in the photograph so I'm not going to try to define it because I don't really know what it looks like. I can't tell. So. In black. So this water and the boat edge should pretty much merge. Um, I really am not seeing exactly where the boat ends and the water starts on any of this. So, if you try to do it, it's not going to look good because you just, you're, you can't tell in the photo. So, you know, your tendency is to want to define it, but it's just not there. So, I didn't do my shadow far enough up on this side, so I'm going to get a little bit of that Prussian blue and black and maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Medium. Use the scruffy brush, it seemed to work best. Scrub in my shadow alongside the boat here. Comes up, almost touches this other boat. Shadow right there. Okay.
This whole area in here is pretty much dark between these boats here. We'll put in a little bit of highlights in there. So it's looking real dark right now, but we'll get it. We'll lighten it up a little bit. Looking good there. Thank you. And the painting. did comb my hair today, so... Who needs new material? <laughs> and the painting doesn't look bad either. That's right. You've been using that line for 30 plus years. It still works. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that show we watched last night. The guy's like, yeah, I took this girl out. I was really interested in first dating brought her flowers and the guy's like wow where'd you come up with that idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was he, the question was what's the most romantic thing you've ever done on yeah. a date <laughs> for a date <laughs> he's like uh that was original that was original funny that was lego masters that's the best new show ever <sighs> i love it Genius. It's like, why has nobody ever thought of this before? <laughs> Watching people build with Legos. Makes me want to get out Legos. I did, I did Legos for years with the boys. I, I played with them almost as much as they did sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of miss it. I'm ready for Liam to get into Legos and I can get back down and play with them again. Well, Nathan is our 29-year-old, and he got Legos for Christmas this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was super excited. <laughs> You're never too old. <laughs> well, obviously, this show is full of adults doing playing with Legos. So, hmm. Okay, getting some black here. I need to put in these buoys or whatever these are in the water here. Coming along. Thank you. I love it. I was telling the... I didn't mention that I got a car this week. I think that's why you want a car. <laughs> I got a car this week, and uh, I just love it when I get to explain to people what I do, because <laughs> they're always like, you do what? <laughs> I'm like, I paint on YouTube. <laughs> well, again, people watch you. <laughs> like, yeah, some people, we're really grateful for them. <laughs> you all make this fun for us, so thank you for 
for hanging out sure. with us today yeah. and listening to our stupid talks about other stuff not painting related. But it's kind of like we're just friends sitting around. Exactly. That's how we painting, feel. Painting, having fun. Yep. Catching up on what's going on in yep. the world with real people. Real life. Yep. Okay. I put a little bit too much of that shadow in there. Just kind of shadowed the edge of that with a little bit of glaze just to set those in because otherwise they're going to look like they're just kind of pasted on top. So you still, you need to set that, set them in there with some, some glaze shadows in the water. Using the number one round here seems to be working all right, so. some highlight on this post so that it stands out a little bit against the boat there let's use the highlight along this edge I'm going to highlight the top of this thing got some sort of design here. I'm trying I'm not gonna try to do it all the way, but I'm trying to kind of indicate it a little bit and give this boat a couple of layers of things happening there. Getting the phthalo blue some white here. Let's use that as our Okay, I'm going to go back to this angle brush because I can get thinner lines with it. And get some more of that thalo blue with white. And so I thought I did more on this than I did. Let's get that darker color and fill in this with the darker. Ultramarine blue, mix that with the phthalo blue and use it right in here. Right at the top of my pole there. If 
very loud swallowing going on over there. Mm. <laughs> All right. Dark. Really dark. Probably this boat is, I don't know, I'm not sure where that part is starting to come up. I feel like we're probably pretty close to it right in here somewhere, so I'm just going to kind of curve it right there. Oh, I just got some, I had white on my hand. Got it on the canvas right there. Mm. No, it's taking off the paint. Okay. Thankfully, it was in a dark area where it was easy to cover. Okay. So, yeah, let's get my... Almost done. Actually, let's go ahead and do this last one over here. some ultramarine blue and mixing it with the phthalo blue. So we've got that true blue color and a little bit of white. I'm going to add a little glazy medium because it feels like it's a little bit soft. There's too much water. Okay, I'm going to add it right in here. in that medium darker blue here and just kind of dabbing it off some of these areas kind of blending it into the boat really fun 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 that is kind of glazing in can always kind of subtly change the color really easily by glazing. So if you get your highlights in here and you're just like, eh, it's a little bit dark or, you know, a little bit too bright or whatever in that area, you just glaze over the top with some of this color and tone, tone it, change the color, change the depth. It's not as easy to glaze the lighter color over the top. So you kind of want to start lighter than, than to try to glaze the dark into the light or you glaze light over the top, you know, it doesn't work as well with lighter colors, but you can definitely darken up your colors really easily with some glaze. Get a little bit of that black and shaping this out a little bit. kind of left a little bit of a dark kind of right here because I figure that's this little bit here I'm not really sure how far up it goes but I'm just kind of indicating it there let's get some of this light thalo here working on into this boat I 
actually this. Actually, I think this is up higher here. Bring this up just a little bit more right here. Widen out this boat a little bit and bring this highlight up a little bit higher right here. Get the halo or the Prussian, I mean, just. Give this boat over here just a little bit of, kind of a highlighted edge, maybe. And then just blend it in. Get the dark. Okay, and then get that black. Just make sure my posts are real solid because I've painted over them a couple times here. So. Make sure everything makes sense all the way up. And this side I haven't done yet really. So these are my focal point ones. So I'm not going to do as much detail on these ones that are farther off from that, but I do want a little bit, and especially on this one. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of blend that out a little bit, just tap onto it. It's not so obvious. I'm going right over the top of that. I'm going to get that dark blue brighter blue there. Just go over it, put the light down and then just going over it with the dark, kind of a dark shadow right there. And then put that post back. have the most expensive vegetables in history after you buy your truck and <laughs> that's all I'm saying we're doing a garden this year we'll be, we'll like, be setting up a farmer's market <laughs> we're gonna need one with all the tomatoes I'm planting tomatoes are about two thousand dollars a piece <laughs> <laughs> cherry tomatoes that is <laughs> <laughs> 
about right. <laughs> That'll pay for one. Oh shoot, I forgot to change my end screen again. Again. Wow. I know. kind of put some random random stuff in this one just kind of phthalo blue and Prussian blue here if I don't mention the colors, I, I figure that you can follow along just from what I, you know, when I first line it out. So if it helps, you might take a screenshot and just, um, if you're painting along, you know, and just write out on your screenshot what colors are where. And then that way when I get to going, because sometimes when I get to going and paint in here, I don't stop to mention what colors I'm picking up, especially if I've blended some colors and already told you what colors I've blended then I usually don't mention it again every time I pick it up so because um, that just gets redundant and I'll repeat myself over and over again so just a you know tip about that because I got a comment about it this week about how I wasn't explaining the colors every time and I was like well I do explain it at the very beginning when I first mix them but then when I get to go on, I just don't always remember to go back and re say it over and over again what I'm using. So, and especially if I'm using the same colors in an area, you know, multiple times, it's just, I don't. So that can help you to keep track with what I'm doing if you have trouble keeping up. Just make a note. glazing not quiet but sort of two hours not bad bad for Saturday okay I'm just kind of glazing back over with these with the ultramarine blue in some of these areas Ultramarine blue just gives it a little bit like a cooler tone, so it's we've got the play between the brighter greens and the cooler blue tone. Brighter green phthalo in the phthalo blue. It's not green, but you know what I mean. Green tone, and then the ultramarine blue has more of the purpley tones in it. I'm going to just clean up this post here. Got some of the water over the top of it. There are some of these posts that I can see where the water is ending, so I didn't do a great job on some of these of covering over that line between the water and the post, but And then let's get our little bitty brush and we'll put in our little ropes because those are kind of cool. So I'm going to get the 
the little blue, ultramarine blue mixture from over here. If I can get some, I'll just have to mix up some more. The little blue, ultramarine blue, and some white. And I'm just going to try to kind of double load it so I just have kind of a lighter color on one side and the darker color on the other side. See that? And don't worry. If you don't want to be lazy, you can do them one at a time. Do the darker color first and then the lighter color. And you're not really seeing, I'm going to go ahead and put it over the top, but they're really not, uh, not showing the backside of that rope because it's in the shadow area. So what we can do is just kind of go back in with our darker color and just put it in there so we can see that it's there, but it's not going to be as bright as the rope in this, in the light. That makes sense. Adding a shadow to my ropes here. Adding a highlight to some of the posts. And there's one more over here. Okay, let's call that done. I think so. No? It's okay. Don't tell you it's gonna push on though. I'm gonna sign it with my brush this time because I need a lighter color. All these corners are too dark for that black to show up. So I'm just gonna mix some of this blue that's lighter. 
some white. You want to use a brush that's small. This brush may be a little too big, but I think it, I can get it small enough. And I'll hold it real tight to the thing and just use it really like a pen almost. And I probably should be a little farther away from that edge because it's going to get covered. I try to stay about a quarter inch away from the edge. That way you can frame it. Zoom out so I can see the whole thing. There we go. We got some super chats. Awesome. We have a super chat, yes. Nice. And the super chat is from Denise and say, I really love all your paintings, exclamation point. Aw, thank you, Denise. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the support. Yes, it's awesome. I'm going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> Just call it Mark's Truck Fund. Let's be real. All right. Wow, that looks to be, I mean, that does look very realistic. Thank you. I mean, that is really sweet. Yeah, it's fun. Really not. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of little details in here and the boats themselves, but I think the whole it's not a uh, particularly hard, I don't think, as far as techniques go. You know, just a lot of little scribbling and stuff. I think maybe these lines might be tricky. Um, but... Fortunately, it's kind of one of those that it's sort of blurry anyways, so your lines don't have to be perfect, perfect for it to still look good. So, and you really could probably, I'm trying to think of how you would simplify it. I'm not sure. You really do need the dark and light in here for it to really make sense. Cause I think even if they were fully dark silhouettes, they wouldn't have as much impact, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully you learned something. Hope you try it. If you do, you can share it with me on your social media uh, and tag me, and I'll try to give it a thumbs up if I see it. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be back next Tuesday, Tuesday for... Um, what are we painting on Tuesday? You're painting another lady with her. With her <gasps> yes, yes. So if you liked head. that. Yep, yep, yep. We're doing another impressionist. So many people liked it. I know we had a lot of people painting it, and we had got really good feedback on it. So we're, I'm excited. That was super fun to paint. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna widen this out just oh, a little yeah. bit. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Check it out. Yeah, and if you do, um, if you do enjoy it and want to uh, share it with your friends on social media, that helps us out tremendously. Yes. So. Yep. Helps get let people know what we're doing on our channel. And uh, a happy birthday to Mona. Oh, Her happy birthday, birthday tomorrow. Mona. Oh, yay. Happy birthday, Mona. That's awesome. I thought you said her birthday was in March. Yeah, March 1st. Oh, March 1st. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. So technically it is in March. True. Okay. That is tomorrow, right? Yep. In most places. <sighs> <laughs> Some places it's today, like Australia. True, true that. Well, happy birthday, Mona, then, in, from Australia. <laughs> she, she's already. Yeah, she's only 40 minutes away from her birthday. So. Nice. Oh, she stayed up late to watch with us. Yeah. That's awesome. And help us out with the moderation moderators. We needed it today. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, we had over 600 Wow. Watching, so we usually get some interesting people that <laughs> jump in. So <laughs> when we have that many watching, yeah. That's great. Well good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, definitely uh try it. It was a fun fun one. So I just went through and glazed a little bit brighter blue to brighten that up a little bit even more. So okay. Sounds good. I'm gonna stop now. All right, I could keep going. You know me. <laughs> We'll let Mark go buy his car. <laughs> See you later, guys. Thanks. <laughs>